Hey, James, what's going on, man? You scared the living daylights out of me. What are you doing here? Well, not much. I just figured I'd pop in and see what you're up to. What I'm up to? Well, not too much right now. I'm just working on a, a design for a shoulder plane. Uh, I was going to make a plane, and I want to show everybody how I did it. Um, I need a plane for cleaning up tenons and rabbits and stuff. Like this old beautiful booger? Yeah, that one's cool. I like that. That's that's kind of neat. It's an yeah. old-fashioned thing. But I wanted to make mine kind of modern, kind of sleek. So I ordered some uh, some cool hardware. I got a nice blade, and I was going to print out the body of the plane on the on my CNC machine. Well, you know, there's a better way than that. Now I know why you're here. You're talking about this challenge where you go around to all the different YouTube makers and you challenge them to make something using just hand tools. So I imagine if you're here now, that means you're going to challenge me to make this plane using nothing but hand tools, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. All right, buddy. Well, I'll take on your challenge. I'll make my plane using nothing but hand tools, but I got one stipulation. If I got to do right. it, you got to do it. So you go back to your shop, make your plane. I'll make my plane and we'll compare them at the end. How about that? Sounds good to me. Great. Now get out of here. <laughs> See you later. Man, now I gotta make this thing using nothing but hand tools. Who does this guy think he is? Like the YouTube president or something? Owner of the internet? Going around making challenges to everybody? He thinks he's like the next Roy Underhill. You've seen his channel name is Wood By Right. He thinks he's Wood Right. Or Tom Fidgen, the unplugged woodworker. He's not unplugged woodworker. Man. He, he's powerless woodworker. At least Roy Underhill had hair. What did you say? Nothing. How does he do that? So let's make this plane out of ash. I'm gonna actually make this into something that I enjoy. And ash is a wood that I really like. Um, just a simple hardwood that uh, works very well, has a, a grain that plays well usually too. can cut it to length and then cut it to width and uh, end up with a billet that's the right shape and size. It ends up being an inch and a half thick and uh, nine and a half inches long. I really enjoy this part. Hand tools are just fun. I love it when it finishes the cut. Planing off the saw marks, making it nice and smooth and seeing what's underneath. Now the bed for this iron is crazy because it's at 45 degrees like most irons, but because it's skewed there's also a 30 degree angle that it is set into, so all of the cuts and marks are compound. I'll start after marking out where I want the bed to be, I'll start with an auger to start removing the space for where the chips will come out and then use a handsaw to cut the compound angle down into that hole. This will be the start of where the bed of the iron is at. Yeah, don't run the saw into the vise. Now this is a very, very tricky cut. Uh, this is the hole that the iron will fit through. The final width needs to be an inch and a half. Uh, so I'm using a 3 8 bit and allowing me to have some space to chisel back to. Just making sure that I stay away from the bed line. Once I drill all the way through into the opening, I can start to carve out the opening to the appropriate shape. Uh, this is just a space for the chips to come out and curl. Because it's skewed, the chips come out one side and not the other, but they automatically come out very curly, and uh, they're a lot of fun to play with. I'm just using a combination of gouge and straight chisel and then with a chisel I'm coming in and flattening out the bed and making sure that it is nice and smooth and clean. Once I have the mouth all shaped for the most part I can start cleaning out where the iron and the wedge will fit. This is a very slow and tedious process trying to move chips out of that space but it's fun. I, I don't know why but slow and tedious processes are just enjoyable when you take the time to really do them well. And a sharp chisel makes things fun too. Now that I have the hole uh, preliminarily cut, I can set the wedge in and make sure everything fits. And this allows me just to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Is there anything that I need to adjust? 
and I'm going to slowly start working on things and making them what they need to be. Once it gets very, very close to where it needs to be, I just take the final bit with a file that will give me a nice smooth surface all the way across as well as flattening it out. The wedge needs to have a flat side where it beds on the top and it needs to be beveled to match the angle of the iron. So this is a bit tricky, but if you take your time and slowly work up on it, it will uh, it'll do it. Got to do the first test run, and unfortunately I wasn't terribly happy with how it was peeling. And so that gave me the chance to then come back in and adjust a few things, and finally got it working the way I liked it. Now that I have the wedge in the right shape, I can actually then shape out the head to make it look more like a traditional wedge. Don't want no new new fangled adjuster on mine. Yeah. Wedge and edge, that's the way to do it. Now we can start doing the finishing work, which is a lot of filing and shaping with uh, chisels and rasps, getting into a finer chisel and a finer chisel until you're getting that shape exactly where you want it. Making everything look pretty and feel good. Very same thing with shaping the body, starting with a file, with a rasp and a chisel, and then going in with a finer file and a finer file. And I actually finish this um, completely with files, I don't use uh, sandpaper on it. It uh, just gives you a nice, real feel. I give it one coat of boiled linseed oil. That allows me to, to see the surface and make sure that I don't need to clean anything else off. And then I can... Uh, do some of the carving because what is a tool without carving? It's just a tool. But with a little bit of carving it becomes something a little more. And oh I just enjoy this. This has just become so much fun for me. Spending a little bit of time making it look pretty. After carving, I'll do one more coat of boiled linseed oil. And now you get to see how well it works. That plane doesn't know if that board is pine or butter. I love these curls. I mean, every shop floor needs to be covered in these curls. That, that, that's a real plane. Not like that fangled adjuster thing that the other guy's doing. <laughs> All right, so there it is, man. What do you think? I think it's pretty darn yeah. decent. A little fancy, though. Fancy? Well, I wanted to be able to fine-tune it and adjust it without having to go hunt down a hammer. Well, a hammer and a wedge really is traditional. Less things to go bad. Go bad? This isn't going to go bad. <laughs> to each his own, man. I like how yours turned out, though. It looks good. I love the two-tone quality on yours. That's sharp. Well, thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And if you want to see either of the builds, click on our faces. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to see more. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Be safe and have fun woodworking. It's not going to go bad. It might. Yeah, out of here. <laughs> See you around, man.